Welcome everybody to another episode of HomeKit Insider. You got me, Andrew O'Hara, here in my pal, and the one putting stop in, hey you, stop that, it's Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm so excited, Andrew, because you are live on the floor. Well, if, you, if people are watching on YouTube, you're not literally on the floor right this no. second. No. But you are at Las Vegas CES 2022 your view is is actually pretty envious right now. Is this your hotel room? Is that where you're at right now? Uh, yeah, that's my hotel room right now. But I can't encourage wow. people to watch the video this week because I've been up for about 37 seconds. So, <laughs> Yes, our time like... difference this week has, has made the timing interesting. But uh, it's a perfect time to, for your background. My goodness, that sunrise <laughs> is incredible. So, uh, listen, or viewers, uh, you know, Andrew looks great. I mean, he always looks great. But really tune in for that sunrise youtube.com slash home insider subscribe to the channel andrew we have 1200 subscribers there i don't know if you've seen it recently we hit 12 1200 damn that is not uh too shabby like we're yeah. you know first week of january or so like not bad and i have many listeners uh messaging me suggesting things for you to do once we hit no. 2000 subscribers oh. <laughs> someone said you, know, you have to say not everything's roll, a winner so roll tide on air that's yeah, okay so just saying, I'm gathering all those suggestions for when we hit 2,000. But let us jump into it, Andrew. I know there's actually a ton of HomeKit news from CES, which is exciting. And it's not, you know, Apple news. Apple doesn't do stuff at CES, but other companies are announcing a bunch of HomeKit stuff. So you have amassed quite a list here. Very exciting. And why don't you tell me, what, what are we going to hit first? What are we going to talk about? I mean, let's just run through this. I think the, there's a couple of cool things right at the top. There are some like less cool but still cool things that we'll talk about. But I think the uh, biggest ones, the two that we'll start with, is got to be uh, Wemo and Eve's two big announcements. So let's, uh, let's hit Eve first. Eve first. So Eve has announced a new outdoor camera, which is very cool. It is HomeKit Secure Video. And as you know, Eve, they don't require hubs. There's no like Eve subscription service, so this is an outdoor camera. It is a floodlight camera, which looks very similar to the Natatmo outdoor floodlight. You know, it looks it looks pretty similar, but it's really cool, and it is actually cheaper than the Natatmo one. This outdoor cam launches April 5th, so in a few months, but it's going to be $249. It's got the 157 degree field of view. You know, it's got the waterproof, night vision, and all that. Looks very cool. I'm glad they announced this because now. We have options for outdoor floodlight HomeKit secure video cameras. And I'll be honest, I'll probably be picking one of these up for my new house because this, this is the real deal. And then they, didn't they also announce the motion blinds are now available. And so they partnered with, I guess, multiple different uh, blind companies. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but they got like Omnia blinds. They're available from select blinds. And now they've added their HomeKit smart blind option to uh, to the world here so yeah Eve killed it it was very cool yeah and if we have time we can come back and we can do like a review of those the Eve motion blind stuff because we do a review of that the review is live so if we get through the rest of this home kit stuff from CES we'll come back and visit it but uh they're cool um, with the Eve camera the only thing that I wanted to mention too is like the power supply some people were confused on what was running this thing. So it is a standard like wired outdoor camera. Uh, right. You do need to like replace like a sconce or something like that or run the power to actually run that thing. Uh, yeah. Just to like a refresher in the world of HomeKit, unless something says wireless, it's wired. And if it's right. wireless, it's gonna require a hub. So uh, there's mm -hmm. no one's made, there doesn't exist. You can't buy a, home kit wireless uh camera that does not have a hub eve does not do hubs so yeah just a standard wired camera here right now i don't see in any of the info here do you know if the eve outdoor camera has thread or is that just wi-fi so thread is um is still not going to support cameras it's too low right. power right. so there's no no cameras will use thread yeah. in any capacity yet so i believe it's still just it's gonna be wi-fi based so connect to your wi-fi it's on your house so you should be able to get a wi-fi signal if you can get one you know standing right outside your wall gotcha very good all right well belkin wemo had a cool announcement as well they have a new doorbell camera that they announced this thing is thick 
like T-H-I-C-C. -C. I mean, I don't know how thick the Logitech Circle View doorbell is. I know you have one to compare. But the pictures, this looks like a very deep doorbell. But HomeKit Secure Video, again, you can actually order it today. This is available today, $250, which is a little more expensive. The Logitech Circle View doorbell that we've talked about before is $200 on Amazon. You can get that one right now. But it's great to have another option out there. Uh, is there any other kind of details that set this apart from the Logitech one or any others? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it is on the thick side. Uh, I get to play with it a little bit and I will say it is on the thick side a little bit, but it's not crazy thick. Part of it too, like in some of the pictures that they were sending, they were like literally showing it on like the angled base. So if like you mount it on the side of your door and it's like angled in a little bit. So it just looked pretty thick. Uh, at the same time, the biggest thing I think that this has as a benefit over the Logitech one is it's got a 178 degree field of view. Like, mm. if you remember, like, go back to, you know, your middle school geometry class, 180 <laughs> degrees is fully left and right. Like, stick your arms out. That's 180. Yes. So, Flat. like, going two degrees, and that's what you've got with your uh, Wemo camera. So, it's ridiculously mm. wide field of view with the goal really being that it can see everything on your front porch. And what I ran into with other cameras was, I, like, other cameras are like, oh, head to toe, field of view, stuff like that. But I wanted to be able to see packages. Like I didn't know if there was a package on my porch. And mm. companies would come, like UPS, would they, they'd set a package on my mat, like my doormat. And mm. I couldn't see it on the cameras. So like it would, be, it would catch like right at the edge of my doormat and I couldn't see there was a package there. Just looking at like the sample video that I've looked at for the Wemo, it doesn't look like it should be a problem. You get this thing mounted in the right spot and you're gonna get everything on your porch. So I'm pretty excited just to try this um, to clear up what, not to drag the verge, but they had reported that there was three HomeKit doorbells now. So just to like go over the options again, you now have the, for HomeKit secure video, you have four main options. You have the Robin, um, right. Proline, the Robin Proline Compact, more on the expensive side, not as pretty. You also have the Logitech uh, Circle View that we talked about, and right. now you have the Belkin Wemo option. So you have four doing HomeKit Secure Video. If right. you want to include um, HomeKit in general, you also have the uh, Arlo. Arlo also does HomeKit. And I, someone mentioned this thing, and I don't even know, they, they seem like they're ghosting people, but just for completeness sake, the Yobi B3 or whatever it was, they did mm. like a crowdfunding campaign and who knows, but they exist well as well in the HomeKit space. So there's a few doorbell options now, just depending on what you're looking for. HomeKit Secure Video is nice because it does your iCloud recording, but a regular HomeKit doorbell still is nice. It'll still give you the smart alerts, still two-way communication. It'll still send the alert to your Apple TV when there's motion. It can still do all of that stuff. So a HomeKit doorbell is still pretty powerful. Now the Natatmo HomeKit doorbell, is that not HomeKit Secure Video? Uh, no, I don't think it's HomeKit Secure Video yet. They've gotcha. promised that it, HomeKit Secure Video is coming, but I gotcha. don't think it's there right now. The biggest benefit, I think, to the Natatmo one, because it's, I think it's still a little bit more expensive, it's like 300 bucks, yeah. but what it has going for it is that it's got its own, um, there's onboard memory, like there's an SD card slot, so you yes. can have a local storage as well. But it also gives you the ability to set up whatever cloud storage you want. So you're recording from that doorbell, where do you want that footage to go? You can save it to your Dropbox account. You can go ahead and send it up to your own FTP server. Like right. you have more flexibility in what you do with that footage and it still does not require any subscription. Um, heck, it requires less of a script subscription than the HSV ones because you don't mm -hmm. even need an iCloud subscription to make it work. So right. it's yeah. the Natama one is still a very good doorbell uh, to consider, even if it doesn't have HSD. Yeah, good memory too. I was reading the website as you went, that is totally accurate. <laughs> and yeah, crazy you can set it up with FTP. I feel like I do like the Natatmo look. I feel like that doorbell camera It is a nice looking nice. doorbell cam. Yeah, and it is not as thick. You know, it's, it would be more flexible. It's pretty thin, you know. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, you got one. It's pretty thin, it's not bad at all. Yeah, so very cool. Well, yeah, those are your options. Glad Wemo came out with another one. The, the Natama one is 300 bucks. 
So you're going to be paying a little more for that. And then you have the new Wemo kind of in the middle at 250 Logitech Circle View at 200 And then if you want to spend thousands of dollars, Robin Proline is there for you. They got you covered. <laughs> so. Yeah. And it, again, it, like that 200 price point, if you've already got some Arlo stuff baked in, so you already have the Arlo hub, I think that's at like 150 or 200 somewhere around that price point. Yeah. All right, well, Singled, is that how you, is that how you say it? Singled? I think so. I think it's Singled. singled. I think it's Singled. I think it's Singled. Yeah. So <clears throat> they announced some new light strips at CES. They're going to have light strips that have like Wi-Fi video sync for TV. That'll be coming later this year. They didn't seem like they give out a, a firm date of release or whatever. But they'll have some TV syncing light strips, you know, ones where you can hook it up and sync it to what you're watching. So if there's red explosions in what you're watching, there'll be red on the LED strips and stuff like that. So they and Hugh, Hugh has some of those. And Andrew had talked about those a while ago. So they'll have those. And they're also going to have outdoor string lights priced around $80. So if you want to have some outdoor LED string lights, they have that. They also have a $60 portable lamp that's powered by a rechargeable battery. I think that's called a flashlight. But anyway, <laughs> uh, portable lamp. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, but that's cool. Did you see any of those actually at CES? So, uh, you know, stuff gets fuzzy around CES on not what I've done, which also fuzzy. But I'm talking about, like, what is, like, new at the show and what was announced ahead of time. Right. So in this case, looking at Singlet, it is like I went and talked to them at uh, Pepcom. And I was like, hey, what do you have new for HomeKit? They told me like all those light strips and stuff had come out just before CES, which I don't remember that news. I don't remember us covering or anything. So it, maybe we missed it. Maybe the world missed it. I don't know. <laughs> but what they, what they told me there was new uh, for this year, which I didn't even hear you mention there, they have three new HomeKit sensors. So there's a new motion sensor, a new... Um, water sensor and a new door window contact sensor oh, so okay. those three are new i think they're like zigbee based and they will you don't have to use zigbee i believe but they'll work with HomeKit. so you have those three new ones coming into HomeKit as well as whatever else they have that already works with HomeKit. okay very cool i don't have any singlet devices personally actually i think i have a, a light bulb but it's not home kit so it's just kind of sitting in a box but yeah nice to know they're doing home kit stuff yeah. All right, this one I was excited about because we talked on, I think it was two episodes ago, the Schlag, or how, wait, how do you say it? Because you know how to say this word. <laughs> how did you pronounce it last time? Schlag. Wait, no, it's Schlag is actually how you do it. That's how you said it. See, Nick, you had all, yeah, you had me confused now on like, wait. <laughs> I said Schlag last time, and that was definitely okay. wrong. Okay, so I think Schlag, that's what, I think that's, someone even Schlage. said like, Andrew pronounced it right, and now... Yeah, yeah, my yeah, brain yeah. has left my body, so I'm like, <laughs> how, do, how do you say words? Schlag. Schlag, there was the, it popped up on like a Home Depot website, and then this is a, a door lock that's supposed to be HomeKit with the first, one of the first to support Home Key with a keypad and all that. Well, Schlag made it official, and they said, yes, this is coming out. Uh, it looks like it's been coming out later this year, possibly around, uh, they just said spring 2022, so a few months. But it's going to be $300, and this is going to be a HomeKit-compatible smart lock with keypad built on it and Home Key, which is the NFC-style unlock it with your phone or Apple Watch kind of thing. It's one of the first to support that. So I'm very excited that this is actually official. And again, as I've been – if you follow me on Twitter, I've been posting pictures of the house being built. I mean, if there's not a lot of other Home Key options by then, this looks like a good one. I mean, it's a little pricey, $300, but – Honestly, an August lock is about 250 A level lock is going to be in the 200 to $300 range. So I'm pretty excited about this. Did they actually have it at CES while you were there? No, unfortunately, they were um, another, another casualty of uh, COVID this year, and they were not in attendance. They were, like, literally had their signs up of where they would have been for some of the okay. events. And, uh, yeah, they just they were not here, unfortunately, because I was really excited to check it out and see exactly how their HomeKit implementation worked and all that. But unfortunately, that is one thing I did not get to play with out here. For me, I still just don't like the look of the keypad on the lock. I don't know why. Yeah. That's just not my favorite thing. But I'm just excited if there's anything HomeKey. I mean, it means at least the feature 
is coming and whether if you want it now, cool. You've got an option to go with from a good, reliable company. Uh, otherwise, it hopefully we'll see it from other companies as well uh, soon rather than later. Yeah. Well, it's just very cool. I'm glad it is a real thing. And they confirmed it. Now, there were a couple of Find My products that were announced around CES. This is pretty cool. So Chipolo, you heard about Chipolo when Apple first announced third-party support for the Find My app when they were talking about, you know, uh, this was actually before AirTag launched. You know, they said we're going to expand Find My to third parties. Chipolo had their location tracker, and then Apple announced AirTag, and everybody forgot about Chipolo. Let's be real. And so they're back, and they announced a new device. This is a wallet-sized Bluetooth tracker. Again, this thing, the thing about these and other Find My third parties is they don't have the U1 chip that Apple uses for that precision finding location. But this is a business card sized device from Chipolo. We'll use Bluetooth, works with the Find My app directly, and it fits in a wallet like a credit card. And so you can add Find My capability for your dumb wallet. Now, I'm not saying your wallet is dumb, I'm just saying it's not smart. As in, it does not have a tracker inside of it, like, uh, say, Apple's MagSafe wallet. And, uh, don't, don't be offended. Don't be offended. Listen, you might have a very nice-looking wallet, but it's not smart. Does it have a U1 chip? Exactly. So you can make your wallet smart by <laughs> adding this Chipolo uh, card thing. It's got IPX5, like water resistance, so, you know, rain and stuff would be fine. But it's cool for an option. You know, if you don't like Apple's MagSafe wallet, which only lets you hold three cards, maybe you have a George Costanza style, you know, all your receipts are in the wallet, and you need something to track it, you got this uh, Chipolo thing now. So that's cool. I'm really excited by this because there's a lot. They Okay, first off, lacking UWB. Uh, it's not any company's fault. There's no UWB there because Apple does right. not allow, Apple allows companies to use the ultra-wideband chip. Companies can develop products that use UWB. That's a thing. But with it return with as it comes to Find My right now, Apple does not allow third-party companies to use the precision tracking feature of Find My. That's like only limited to AirTag. <clears throat> so they can use every other feature of Find My, but not the precision Find Me UWB stuff. But at the same time, I don't care. It doesn't, I don't, I, I'm, I am not sad that this doesn't have UWB. Because when I'm, like, if I look back at my usage of the Find My app, using the UWB part is extremely minimal. That is and, true. like, the few times that I've had to do it is for, like, the sole reason that the AirTag speakers are so quiet. Apple went for, like, such a high-quality sound. Like, it's very, it's a very, like, precise clear sound but it's not very loud they're using like that resonance of the plastic shell to act as the speaker without putting like, an actual speaker in there and it's like cool but it's quiet so i don't i've only had to use uwb when i couldn't use the freaking speaker but looking at you know chipolo here they have built-in speaker <laughs> so you don't need to even worry about that like it's a louder speaker than what we've got with air tags it's like much louder so mm. for me i'm just going to use the play the noise thing and and that's gonna be a lot faster than opening the precision finding like waiting for it to connect and to like move your phone around for it to to get its bearings and then guide you there so mm. i don't care this doesn't have uwb uh the other stuff you still have like left behind alerts um you have right. um the find my community and lost mode so if you ever would leave us at a restaurant or something or in the cushion at a uh, chipotle you can get notified like when somebody else comes near it and you can go back and find it. And if they tap it with their stuff, it'll give them the information to contact you and return your wallet. So I'm excited for this. There's no other option that is even close to this, mm -hmm. like before CES. The only option that you had was like, I was using the Nomad one, which is like a card shape with an AirTag slot in the center. And it works, but it's still kind of thick because an AirTag is thick and it's not the most minimal. And like you're talking about the MagSafe wallet from Apple, which is still nice, but the only thing it has there with Find My Alert is the, um, when you put it into lost mode, someone's able to like find you, it, like they can right. tap it and get your information, and it'll tell you when it disconnects from your phone, but that, that's it. So hmm. if you were trying to like relocate it, there's no speaker in it, there's no you know, Bluetooth range, there's nothing like that, there's nothing like, like there's no connection inside of the wallet itself other than the magnets and NFC. 
So if you're looking for something that's actually going to help you find your wallet as well as prevent you from losing it, all of that, the Chipolo one would be a good option. Right. Chipolo, not to be confused with Chipotle, as you said earlier. Uh, yes. But uh, so in customary fashion, this is our second episode for the year. I bought something while we were recording. I bought this Chipolo thing because <laughs> I did not realize uh, that it had the audio thing. I didn't realize it would play a sound for you. Which I will now agree if I had the choice between an ultra wideband precision finding or a sound, I do think the sound is more useful. And as you said, I have used that with my air tags, like play a sound just so I could find my keys in this room. I do find that to be a faster uh, way, I think, to find it because sometimes the, f the precision tracking, sometimes you gotta like wave your phone around in the air. And then, like, you know, wait for it to, like, pick up the, the ultra-wideband thing. But this playing a sound usually happens pretty quickly. And the fact that this Chipolo card actually has that is pretty sweet. So so there you go. Bought my first uh, product of the year on the show. <laughs> the, ch the Chipolo. <laughs> I was to say, because, like, when we started, first started talking, you didn't seem, like, fully convinced by this. And then by the end, you're like, I've already bought it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's literally exactly what happened. Listen, this, the sound thing, I mean, it's a big deal. Because, like, I have the MagSafe wallet. I use it pretty much full time. I get the left behind alerts, which is super annoying because it'll do it in my car when I want to put my phone on my MagSafe car mount. And then I put my MagSafe wallet like in the little dash thing and I get a notification every time. So I was, no, you left your wallet on highway I-4. It's like, I didn't leave it there. It's sitting right here in the car, but you don't know that because, you know. So I'm actually hopeful that I would get less left behind alerts with this kind of card because it just needs to be near the phone it doesn't need to be physically attached to the phone and so i think it will cut down on some of those left behind alerts i don't have to worry about taking it on and off every time i get in the car and again that sound thing is a big deal because there are sometimes when i detach the magsafe wallet and i don't know like exactly maybe where i put it for a second being able to play the sound would be a huge deal so yeah i'm in favor of it from non-convinced to buying <laughs> That, that was my arc. Nice. <laughs> my story arc. Nice. So yeah. so going back to that sound, it's this is hilarious. Like, it was almost like a running joke for like the the time that I was at uh, Showstoppers and stuff, uh, checking out this wallet and everything else they had there. The, um, <laughs> the one, uh, I can't tell you what you know hat he wears, whether it's like CEO, engineer, designer, but whatever it falls into, part of what he was working on with the card was the speaker. Mm. And... He's like a um, a fan of cars and loves. <laughs> he calls it like the side exhaust. Like the side those? exhaust because the actual like speaker is on the corner of the card. Okay. So it, <laughs> and they were telling me like he would go around the office and like looking at like the logo on the card. He would be like, okay, put this in your wallet, and watching them put it in their wallet. Like which hand did they use? How did it tilt? to go into the wallet, trying to decide like which was the most, like the correct corner to put the side exhaust speaker on. So they went with, you know, what they hope is the correct corner um, based on just like all their user testing of when people slide into their wallet, based on like logo orientation and stuff like that. It just happens to be the one of the corners that is sticking out. So that way you're not like burying the speaker into your wallet, like so you can't hear it. It's the one that's facing outward. And it was kind of crazy how much like extra effort went into designing the mm. the most optimal output for the speaker. This is brilliant. I love everything about it, and uh, I'll probably buy multiple other ones now. <laughs> and uh, this is incredible. Um, you know, because actually, uh, my wife, I don't know about yours, but she's got like a, a much larger wallet than I do. It's like one of those like purse wallets. You, you unzip it, it's got a like a clutch cargo. type thing that looks like it could be an entire purse, but it's actually just a thing that goes in the purse. Yes, exactly. Which I will. This is just a side note. HomeKit Insider listeners, if you are uh, a lady and you're out there listening, I would love to know what uh, demographic our audience is. So if we just offended you by saying uh, your wallet is the size of a bag, uh, please tweet at Andrew and myself. I, I would love to know. But yes, that like she's never going to use the MagSafe wallet because a she has a lot of cards and she's usually with the kids and so she's got like health cards you know health insurance cards and all this kind of stuff so i think this would be a great option especially for ladies who who use those the clutch type uh, duffel bag wallets which yeah 
<laughs> that's basically what Andrew said, right? I mean, that's what the, no? uh, this is not what Andrew said. Uh, Steven said it. Steven. <laughs> See, <Okay>. I for. <laughs> In this is su- this is very much generalizing, but I think for um, like trying to get my wife to use it, the biggest situation where it would make sense is if we are going out for a night and she doesn't want to bring a whole wallet, um, right. especially like in college, going to the bars. A lot of girls were using like those just two card slots on the back and leaving their wallets behind. So something like a MagSafe one makes sense in those situation. You're sure. going to go party at the bars. You're going to go to the clubs. Then having something small and on your phone is ideal. But, yeah, if you have to go you know, to Giant Eagle for groceries, you need to bring your carry-on suitcase. So it Did just depends on. Yeah, that's what like our regional chain of grocery stores is. You have a grocery store called Giant Eagle? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard of a lot of grocery stores. I know about Harris Teeter. I know about Kroger. We got Publix. I never heard about Giant Eagle. Is there like an eagle holding a machine gun over an American flag? Like, is that the logo? What's... Nope. <laughs> I've never heard of Giant Eagle. Very cool. Okay. <laughs> it's so weird hearing you like pronounce because you're like putting the emphasis like differently. <laughs> like, like Giant Eagle. Like there's Giant like a big old like kind of like a space between words. Like here, just like yeah, we're gonna head over to Giant Eagle. Like, there's giant, no space. Giant. Like, it's just like giant eagle. It's kind of like one word. Not it's giant like, like, eagle. So it's like giant eagle. Giant yeah, eagle. you're emphasizing the eagle too much. There's there's no gotcha. eagle. Okay. It is not like some okay. America store or anything like that. It's it's just a grocery store. It's kind of like how in New York we would say as one word, bacon and cheese on a bagel. Like if you're going to order breakfast at a of New course. York place, you say it's bacon and cheese. It's just one yeah. word, bacon and cheese. Anyway. Okay, one other find my thing. I know, sorry, a little tangent there. You're welcome, <laughs> listeners uh, and viewers. The Targus, who makes like backpacks and other things, they actually now have a find my equipped backpack that you can get. It's $150. And again, it's the same kind of find my thing as the Chipolo cards where it'll do that lost, you know, or left behind feature, and then you can put it in the app directly. So pretty cool if you like this backpack and you don't want to have to have a secondary device just to do Find My with it. You got it right there. It looks pretty sweet. It looks like you actually have a picture of it. So you got to see this thing in the flesh. Yeah, I get to play around with it. It looks pretty handsome from the front. Uh, It does have, uh, or it is made from recycled materials. There's like 23 or 28 plastic bottles that are used to create each of these backpacks, which you know, hitting the environmental friendly edge. I always like that. Uh, cool. Built in Find My Stuff. There's the speaker and stuff that you can see from the inside. Uh, it runs on a coin cell battery, so the battery is swappable. The Chipolo has like a two year battery built into it, whereas like this has a coin cell battery that you're able to swap out. And yeah, it's like their Cypress Hero backpack, yeah. I want to say. Yeah, very cool. And uh, they, well, let me see. You want to, yes, the Cypress Hero. You got it from Targus. And then they also have this dock that it's a USB-C hybrid 4K 100-watt power delivery dock with fingerprint ID. What would you use the fingerprint ID for? What is that? Basically for, so it's it, that's going to be more of a Windows push than a, than a Mac push. In this case, okay. they say that can be used for like the Windows authentication, like Windows Hello and stuff like that. Like you can use that to authenticate. Gotcha. So basically like Touch ID on your Mac. But right now there's no like third-party Touch ID like can't put a touch ID sensor in a third party product or anything like that for Max. Right. So it does make the price tag kind of high. I think it, it's just definitely going to more target the window users. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And that's someone in the article commented that like why fingerprint sensor windows users. There you go. The, now moving on. TP link has announced four home kit compatible. Well, oh, no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be fixed by the time anyone hears this. But um, their PR seemed to be confusing, and it looked like there was something that got swapped around um, on whoever had wrote that. But TP-Link, they are... So, long story with TP-Link, they had been launching their, like, CASA line of stuff. That's CASA with a K. And they had, like, promised HomeKit. Then they're like, <laughs> JK, no HomeKit. And then they had, like, one product that randomly had HomeKit earlier... Uh, in like 2020, or I guess it's late 2021 probably, that added HomeKit. Now they're bringing like their Topo line. 
which I believe was bigger in Europe. And they're bringing that now to the U.S. And as they bring that top of the line to the U.S., they're introducing some new products that will work with Apple HomeKit. So TP-Link will have two lines of smart home products, Casa and Topo, and the Topo line looks to have some HomeKit stuff. So there are new HomeKit stuff, there's new uh, light bulbs, there are new, I think there's a thermostat, there is, I had like a mini, <coughs> I was talking to Mike about it earlier, smart plug, switch, light bulb, and light strip. So in general, happy to have more home kit stuff coming sure. available okay gotcha well let's do move into like lightning round i know you got a few things on here mila is promising home kit support coming to an existing air purifier is that an air purifier you you know of you know of this i had not heard of them before the show and i saw them hanging out at um like pepcom perhaps or unveiled and it was a really neat looking air purifier so i was just kind of checking it out they have like wood legs on them which is pretty slick, and there's like a nice color touchscreen on the top. I really like the user interface of them, and I was chatting with the team, and they did say that uh, they were kind of like announcing more or less that that was one of the most requested features, and that they will be bringing HomeKit support to their purifier. The development is done. HomeKit support is working. They are just waiting basically for their certification to come through. So it's hard to say how long a certification takes, but the certification is done. It'll be coming out as a firmware update to existing Mila users. But yeah, which is funny because we have like the Mila one promising home kit support and then it mentioned down lower on our list, Aura Air, which is a much, it's a different shape. It's like wall mounted. They just added home kit support. And I don't think anyone covered this. I didn't see it anywhere. And then I got a note from them, like while I was on the show floor saying, hey, BT Dubs, HomeKit support landed like two weeks ago. And I had oh, no wow. idea. So the Aura Air air purifier now support HomeKit, which is pretty awesome. So another firmware update model, just firmware update and boom, you got HomeKit. That's very cool. And I have to say, I'll put links to both of these in show notes, but these are some nice looking air purifiers. The, the Mila yeah. is... Very, it's a cool design, got like a great look, like curved top. And then this Aura Air actually wall mounts. You mount this thing to the wall and it does not look like a regular air purifier. So these are some slick uh, air purifier. <laughs> slick air purifiers. They look very cool. So yeah, I'll put those links in show notes also. All right, uh, then you have Nanoleaf here. What'd they say? Did they announce anything? Nanoleaf, yeah, they have, so no new products from them. But they did announce that the Nanoleaf shapes, elements, and lines products will be able to act as thread border routers for HomeKit. So your right now in HomeKit, I guess before this announcement, your only border routers for thread in HomeKit was the HomePod Mini and your Apple TV. Now you have these guys that can also act as thread border routers. So extending that network, bridging them from thread to your Wi-Fi, it's pretty awesome just to have like another option in your house that can do this. And to be clear, you still need your HomePod or your Apple TV as your home hub. So right. these aren't gonna replace a home hub with that functionality, but there are still people out there who maybe have like, an, have like a 4K Apple TV or an Apple TV HD or the OG HomePod, something that doesn't have the thread built into it, you don't now have to go buy like a HomePod mini or an updated Apple TV just to get that thread border router support. You, if you've got a Nanoleaf product, one of those three or one of those lines, you will have that thread border router support mm -hmm. baked in with those. So it, it, maybe it's a little niche for the people that that's gonna make the most sense to, but it can definitely save some people from having to go out and buy something new very cool yeah and that's very sweet i'll put that article in show notes as well and then akara by the oh go ahead no go ahead. let's go ahead okay and then our friends at akara they have lots of devices we talk about them all the time they've announced a new line of thread enabled products this will be the first time that akara is doing thread stuff they do require hubs you know they got the m2 m1s hubs that we've talked about but they're launching new versions of its door window and motion sensors Finally, that will work with Thread, and they've also su supported or will support Matter in a firmware update 
to their hub. So great to see more thread adoption from Akara. Sweet. So kind of circling back a little bit, talking about Akara adding thread to their new devices, which is super exciting. I'm really excited about new thread devices, which is what takes me back to Wemo. Belkin also announced that they are introducing all new versions of their smart dimmer, their smart wall switch, and their smart plug that have thread support with matter support. So these will be coming out in like the second half of 2022 directly with matter support as I understand it. So when matter launches, these things will be coming to market with matter support, I believe like right at the beginning. So they're not like introducing them ahead of time. So plan your purchases accordingly. Cause I mean, wall switches now with thread, like that's what you got with these. That's pretty awesome. Uh, <clears throat> Andrew, the, the, I'm I'm stressed now because you just said second half of the year. My house will be finished in the first half of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so if I am stuck in a situation where either I will have no light switches and just wires hanging out of my wall waiting for these things, or I'm going to be buying the older dimmer switches without thread, that's it. I'm going to have a crisis of belief, Andrew. I, like, Look, this is what you do, Stephen. You leave the holes in the wall. And okay. whenever someone okay. comes in your room, you tell them just to take the two wires and touch them together. And <laughs> that's totally how safe. you turn your lights on. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. The house will definitely pass inspection like that. <laughs> we'll just tell the guy, you just touch the wires together. That's all you got to do. Yeah, you you're, do have to hold just, it. You're in your kitchen. You're like, oh, Billy, I don't know your kid's names. Billy, hold the wires together. I'm cooking. And he's got to sit there and... <laughs> And then to Hold dim the it, you have, to, you have to like slowly pull it apart to dim and slowly, yeah, that, that'd be real safe. Listen, yeah, that's fine. I don't know if anybody from, from Wemo listens. Didn't we have their, like one of their VPs on last year or the year before? I thought we, didn't we interview We definitely anybody? had somebody. We had somebody. Wemo, listen to me. <laughs> Send me early release products. I will pay for them. I need the threads. I need the thread enabled dimmers. <laughs> To put in my house. Give me all the threads. Don't make me buy your old stuff. That is all. That's my plea. Well, now, if yeah. we're looking for thread-related stuff that is out right now. Yes. Right this second. Yes, please. Wemo has been rolling out the firmware update. The long-awaited update to its scene controller. So the mm. stage scene yes. controller... Boom, it now has thread. So they started rolling this thing out, and assuming there's no problems in the rollout, that they're going to roll out it to everyone by the end of January. Mm. So you may already have the update now. Just a staggered rollout to make sure there's no issues doing the firmware updates. But by the end of January, this should be on everybody's stage scene controller. Okay, all right. Well, very cool. Well... I just really oh, also, that. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Belkin also announced Find My Enabled Earbuds. Just throwing that, just sticking that feather in the cap. Uh, they have new sound core, noise canceling, Find My Enabled Earbuds, charge over Qi and USB-C. There's like some extra wingtip options as well as in-your-ear options. But yeah, so Belkin, Wemo, whatever, had a pretty busy CES. Would I want those headphones at all? I mean... For the most part, I think a lot of people are going to stick with AirPods, but sure, sure. it's okay. just nice to have another. I, I really think I, headphones in general make a lot of sense in building Find My Into. I think it's Absolutely. a really natural spot to have it, and it basically it still has all the other Find My features. So if you are in the market for earbuds and you want to spend less money than on a set of AirPods Pro, then yeah, you might want them because it's mm -hmm. got like the Find My features plus noise canceling at a lower price than AirPods Pro. Okay, yeah. They're the new sound form. They're 180 bucks, And, uh, yeah, you can get notified when they're available right now. I'll put the link in show notes. So, okay, all right. Well, I know you have to get back to the show floor, but you have one last thing here called a Matter Demo. Did you actually see the long-rumored, the legendary, the elusive Matter in person? There was so much Matter. I saw it. <laughs> I looked at it. It's like, whoa. Yeah, matter. Look, there's yeah. matter, and there's matter, and you get a matter. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is this was this random demo was set up by the Nordic Semiconductor, and they were showing off a thread enabled matter connected itty bitty like weather station. 
that's what they were like showing off but it was part of a larger matter demo and it freaking blew my socks off man it blew my socks off because not only did it work insanely well it was lightning fast you know it's all using thread but we're also on the ces show floor we're on the show floor which has the worst Wi-Fi and Bluetooth you'll ever find. Like my Dexcom sensor for my blood sugar, constantly saying like, no signal, no signal, just because like Bluetooth doesn't work. Trying to listen to earbuds on the show floor. No, you try to do that, you're gonna have a bad time because it just keeps cutting out the entire time. It's like Wi-Fi signals, everything like that on the show floor is awful. And here they are with this Matter demo that was working flawlessly. Whoa. So they had, this is the setup they had. There was like a, a smart bulb, which I can't remember the brand of the smart bulb, uh, it was not one I was familiar with, but it, it supported Thread, not yeah. HomeKit. There was a Yale door lock, and also blew a Yale door lock there. That, yeah. again, worked over Thread, I believe. There was an Eve Energy. Again, just that's a, that is a HomeKit-only product. Eve Energy is HomeKit-only, you right. know, before Matter. And then they had um, the Nordic Semiconductor weather station there, so you can get the temperature. And then it was all being run by a Google Nest Hub. So it's they the just you know used the Google key phrase and like turn on the light and instantly the light comes on. Whoa. Okay, that sounded so, so your response. Okay. Whoa. The, the light promise came is true. On. So the promise is true. It will like do all the things. Yeah. It, this was the first time that I've actually seen something connected with matter. And I mean, I'm watching an Eve energy being controlled by a Google Nest. Like you could, if you are a fan of those Google Nest, you could go ahead and get that and control your home kit home over matter. So Whoa. it's pretty, it was really impressive to see. I was very, very excited about it. So it, if things are happening, matter okay. is a real thing. Well, 2022, the year of matter, apparently. And so I think that that bodes well for an exciting year of home stuff, even just in this first couple of weeks. So that's a ton of HomeKit news just from CES. We didn't have time to get to some of the other stuff that we had lined up, but fret not. I know. I really wanted to review those Omnia blinds for you. But yes. yeah, again, got to get to the show floor. So if you guys care about the Omnia blinds, there is a written review already up. You can dig into it but these are thread-enabled blinds. They work with HomeKit. They're pretty cool. Go read all about it. And you know what, send me your questions. If you have more questions, send them to me and I'll hit them in the review that we do next week on the podcast. Yes, and we do have some listener questions already, which is awesome, so we'll get to that next week and cover the little bits of news we didn't get to. So, awesome show. Andrew, thank you for reporting live from the floor of CES Las Vegas at this sunrise early time. Appreciate it. And of course, yes, send in your questions about the Omnia blinds. Keep sending in just your general HomeKit questions, your projects. Tweet at Andrew and myself. Comment on the YouTube video, youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. Thanks to the 1,200 of you. Subscribe there. Keep subscribing to that. We'll have to make Andrew do something. He has agreed to nothing yet, but we'll see if we can, if we can <laughs> persuade him sometime soon. And we've actually gotten multiple five-star reviews recently. We really appreciate those. We're like a 4.99 rated uh, show in Apple Podcasts. And there was just that one dude. He didn't know what he was doing. He accidentally clicked the one. Uh, I actually had a friend one time that thought you had to click like each star to do five stars. (laughs) And by doing so, he clicked the first one first and gave me a one-star rating. But anyway, uh, so don't do that. Just click five stars in the Apple Podcasts. And yeah, thanks for listening. It's going to be a great year. We'll catch you next time. Cool. See you guys.